My name is Hannah and this is my No Buy Year. This video is a catalog of strategies to help reduce acne, none of which involve buying skincare. I do believe that skincare can help with acne, and if you want me to do a separate video about all of the different ingredients that I think help the most in the battle against acne, just say the word and I will totally do that. But over my long battle with acne, I've learned that acne is a symptom. It's a symptom of imbalances or blockages in the body. And where skincare can help in treating the symptom, it doesn't treat the root cause. And I'm a lot more interested in treating the root causes inside the body. And I've had a lot more success in my battle against acne with treating the root causes inside the body. These strategies will be extra helpful if you have acne, but they will also just be helpful in keeping your skin looking youthful and healthy even if you don't have acne. I take self-care really seriously and skincare the most seriously because I know firsthand how acne can really damage your sense of self and not in a superficial way. And in this political climate, my focus on self-care has even intensified for myself, but also for others. It's part of why I started this channel, because I think it's extra important right now that we keep ourselves in tip-top shape so that we can be the most effective versions of ourselves. I basically feel like if our skin is glowing to the gods, then we can smash the patriarchy with that much more efficiency and glory. On top of that, I really don't think that you should have to go into debt to have good skin. Because if you're worrying about overspending and feeling guilty about it, you definitely won't be the most effective version of yourself. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. For some context, let me tell you about my skin. I've struggled with acne all through my teens and my 20s. I'm 33 years old right now, I have dry skin, and I also have mild polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS. It is an endocrine disorder and it basically means that my body has a hard time balancing its own hormone levels. I'm not a doctor, but at this point I have spent almost 20 years learning about acne and much of that learning has been through trial and error. You know I have to give this disclaimer. Everybody's body is different and I'm not a doctor. What worked for me might not work for you, especially when it comes to food, supplements, etc. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. And there might be a lot of reasons why you don't want to do what I do or what I did, and I'm totally aware of that. All I can do is let you know what worked for me and hope that it's helpful. I have 10 strategies, some of which are just little things that you can change in your lifestyle and in your routine, and some of which are kind of big shifts, the doozies. They're all pretty much mixed in together. Let's get started. Strategy number one switch to a natural deodorant. One of the ways I think about acne is that it's a sign of blockage. It represents your body trying to clean itself out, trying to drain and purge. And it's my understanding that one of the ways that our body cleans itself out is through the lymphatic system. So I was once having a facial from an esthetician who told me that all of the lymphatic system that's above the chest drains out through the armpits. So basically, all of the lymph nodes in your neck and chest and face, they all flow down towards the armpits and all of the gross stuff that they're responsible for pulling out of your system and draining and expelling from your system is meant to be drained out the armpits. That's what armpit sweat is. Antiperspirant literally clogs the drains. It seals the grossness in. And if you seal it in day after day, week after week, month after month, it blocks up in your system. And this esthetician told me it can cause inflammation and puffiness and of course, acne. And let me tell you, when I switched to natural deodorant shortly after this conversation, my sweat smelled really foul for at least a month. But I stuck it out and after about a month, it stopped smelling bad. And previous to that, I had always just thought that I was a really smelly person, like a naturally smelly person, because every time I forgot to wear deodorant or every time my deodorant wore off, I would smell this horrible, acrid smell of BO. And I just thought, gosh, I really have to wear a lot of antiperspirant. But in fact, what was going on was that my body was just clogged 
with a bunch of nasty stuff. So once I had sweated all that gross stuff out, and again, it took a month, but I did it. Once I had sweated it all out, it turned out that I smell just fine as a person. And now I just use Toms of Maine deodorant. It's a very mild, natural deodorant, and it doesn't work in the same way that an antiperspirant does, but it's all I need. Strategy number two, drink water. You have heard this before. You probably knew it was coming. I will keep it short. If you drink a lot of water, your skin will improve. This is true whether you have acne or not. Your body needs a lot of water to flush out the nasties. So up your water intake. Do it consciously. Do it proactively. Do it with the same passion that you would apply an expensive skincare product every night before you go to sleep. And I promise you, your skin will improve. Strategy number three, change the foods you eat. This is the doozy. This is the hard one. But this is also the one that's been the most effective for me. So one way I think about acne is that it's a sign of blockage. And another way I think about it is that it's a sign of inflammation in the body. The single most effective change that I have seen in my acne has come from figuring out how to make my digestive system function the best that it can possibly function. So I went through all of my teens and 20s without knowing that my body has kind of a hard time digesting glutinous grains and dairy. So that whole time, my gut was really unbalanced and had a bunch of bad bacteria in it. So in addition to acne, I was gassy and lethargic and I didn't sleep well ever. And it turned out that it was all connected and the culprits were some of the foods that I was eating. Through a very long process of trial and error, I have learned that my gut is happiest when I avoid eating dairy, grains, and sugar. And clean eating has also improved the quality of my sleep, reduced the level of my stress, and reduced depression, all of which are linked to clearer skin. I personally believe, because of my experience and the experience of others close to me, that a lot of acne sufferers are eating foods that are causing them inflammation and digestive distress and that they just don't know it. So if you have acne and you've never thought about this or you don't even know where to start, I really recommend a clean eating program called the Whole30. I have done the Whole30 program three times. I will link all the information down below. It's free, it's online, and it has absolutely changed my life and it has had a dramatic effect on my skin, way more than any of my expensive skincare ever has. Strategy number four, balance your hormones. Acne can be caused by pores getting clogged externally, like from something you put on your skin, but in many cases, acne is hormonal. It comes from within. So in this way, number four and number three are kind of connected because one of the ways that you can balance your hormones is with food, and one of the ways that your hormones can get unbalanced is because of what you're eating or not eating. If you have a super random eating schedule or if you're not eating enough food, there's a good chance that some of the major hormones in your body are out of whack. I used to really stress out my body by severely restricting calories. And once I started clean eating, I started eating much better food and I also started eating more food, like an appropriate amount of food for a human. And once I started doing that, my hormones have calmed down and my skin has too. In my experience, if you have food habits that stress your body out, like waiting a really, really long time between meals or going all the way until the afternoon before you eat your first meal, there is a good chance that those habits are contributing to your acne because they're unbalancing your stress hormones. It helps me to think about food as a medicine that keeps my hormones happy. If this sounds like it could be you and you're interested in learning more about how food affects the stress hormones in the body and how stress hormones can affect inflammation in the body, I really suggest reading the book that the people who founded the Whole30 wrote to go along with the program. It's called It Starts With Food. So I learned a lot about these things from that book and from some other research, but the most convincing thing was seeing what happened to my skin and what happened to my energy levels when I started eating clean food consistently. If you are a woman, another consideration when it comes to balancing the hormones in your body is birth control. If you have PCOS like I do, or if your hormones are chronically imbalanced 
for some other reason, birth control can help. It can help keep everything on an even keel. So even if you aren't trying to control birth, it might be worth asking your doctor about using birth control basically as a hormone medicine. And again, I'm not a doctor. I absolutely am not. And so I'm not suggesting that you take birth control specifically for this reason. I'm just suggesting that you talk to your doctor about it if you think that a hormonal imbalance might be at the core of your problems with acne. Because for me, birth control has been a major player. And the flip side could also be true. I think for some people, birth control disrupts their hormones in a way that can cause acne. So either way, just think about birth control, if it is in your life or if it isn't in your life, as something that can affect your skin in either direction. But again, I have PCOS. I have a diagnosed hormone imbalance in my body. So that is the reason that birth control is so important for me. If you don't, if you feel like your body is chugging along just fine when it comes to your reproductive system and everything like that, then I wouldn't suggest pursuing birth control as your first strategy to reduce acne. I would suggest looking at all the other things on this list first. Strategy number five is facial massage. And of course you can pay to get a facial massage, but I'm talking about self-facial massage. This is connected to lymphatic drainage. Gentle facial massage can encourage the lymphatic system in the face to drain and purge. And this can help reduce acne and it can also help reduce swelling and puffiness. Lisa Eldridge has a marvelous video about self-facial massage, which I will link down below and I suggest checking it out. Strategy number six, improve your sleep. This is one I take very seriously. My sleep has improved dramatically over the last couple of years and I have noticed a concurrent dramatic change in my skin. So my strategies for getting a lot of sleep are these. I have replaced the bulb in my bedside lamp with an amber colored bulb. So basically the light that comes out of my bedside lamp has no blue in it. Blue light, as you probably know, it's also hormonal actually, it triggers the hormones in your body that say it's sun, it's sunny, it's morning time, it's time to wake up. Um, so looking at a bunch of blue light, which comes from screens and light bulbs, etc., right before you go to sleep, it basically tells your body that it's time to be awake. I love my amber bulb. It's expensive. I think it was $22 or something, but it was so worth it, and I will definitely link it down below. I bought it off Amazon. No screens in bed, ever. I don't bring my computer into my bedroom with me and I do use my phone as an alarm clock but I bring it in, I plug it in, I set the alarm and then I don't look at it at all when I'm in bed. That has really helped. I also find it's really useful to stop eating a couple of hours before bed. So if I'm gonna go to bed around 11, I try not to be eating much past 9. Like, I try not to have any late night snacks right before bed because I find that my body trying to digest the food can keep me awake. And finally, I have acquired a couple of sleeping masks that go over your eyes. I never used to think of myself as someone who was particularly sensitive to light while I was sleeping, but then once I started wearing these masks that block out all of the light, it's like I can't sleep without them. They've changed everything, they're amazing. Strategy number seven is to reduce forced air. So that means like air conditioning and heating, which especially if they're blaring 24 seven in your space and all through the night while you're sleeping can be really bad for your skin and can trigger acne in a number of ways, especially by drying out like the deeper layers of your skin, even if you have oily skin, and then your skin responds to that dried outness by overproducing oil, which will clog your pores. So if you're in a dorm environment or some other kind of environment where you can't actually control the forced air that's being pumped into your space, open your window and just let some of it out and let some fresh air circulate in. But if you can control it, I do suggest taking long breaks from having your air conditioner or your heater on if you can stand it, if it's safe for you. And especially at night, I suggest doing without forced air as, as frequently as you can in your home. Strategy number eight. Strategy, I can't. Strategy number eight 
don't touch your face. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Don't touch your face. There's so many germs on your hands. Don't touch your face unless you're washing it or putting on skincare or makeup. And when you do those things, make sure that your hands are clean. Don't touch your face. It sounds dumb, but it took me a long time to break the habit once I figured out that touching my face all day might be one of the things that was contributing to my acne. Strategy number nine, in a similar vein, keep a separate towel for your face. So don't dry your face off on the same towel that you use for your body. What I do is I have a bunch of little washcloths that are just my drying towels for my face. So I have one little washcloth on the towel rack and next to it I have whatever the towel of the moment, whatever towel I happen to be using then. So when I step out of the shower, I open the curtain and I reach for the little washcloth and I use it to pat my face dry and then I put it back and then I use the towel for the rest of me. And I use the big towel if I'm ever needing to dry off my hands. I only ever reach for that little towel to use it on my face and I don't use any other towels on my face. Strategy number 10 and the last, supplements. Now, for the millionth and final time, I'm not a doctor, and you may want to check with your doctor before you start taking any supplements. So don't just take my word for it. Do your research, ask your actual doctor. <laughs> but I do believe that supplements have been a huge help to me, and so I couldn't make this list without mentioning them. The supplements I take that I believe help directly with my acne are zinc, magnesium, collagen, and probiotics. And I will put links down below of all of the supplements that I specifically take so that you know which ones they are. Zinc and magnesium are just two minerals that have been proven, I believe, based on my reading, to frequently be low in the bodies of people who struggle with chronic acne. So the belief is that if you struggle with chronic acne, there's a good chance that you might have low zinc and low magnesium, and that it could be linked by boosting those minerals in your body you might be helping get your body to a place where you're less likely to constantly be struggling with acne. I also know that magnesium can help with stress and with sleep, especially if you take it in powder form and you take it at night. And reducing stress is one of the major overall ways to help your skin. I didn't give it its own category, maybe I should have, but I think it's kind of implicit. Collagen, I'm not sure if it helps ward off acne, but I do notice that when I take it regularly, the blemishes I do get heal a lot faster. I mean, dramatically faster. I'm in my 30s, so my skin doesn't heal as fast as it used to, and it gets slower and slower at healing with every day that passes, but taking a collagen supplement on the daily really, really helps with that. I'm, I was kind of shocked when I first started taking collagen at how fast my skin was healing from blemishes. So I really believe in that one. And then the probiotics just go back to the thing about digestion. The taking of probiotics could easily have been grouped under strategy number three, which had to do with improving your digestion by changing the foods that you eat. That's why I take probiotics. And again, to me, they're indispensable. So all the links for those will be down below. That is it. The biggest ones to me are food and hormones, and they're interconnected in the way that I described, but those are also the two hardest areas in which to make change in my experience. It is hard to change the foods that you eat, but if you really commit to it, if you really try to learn what makes you feel good and what makes you feel bad food-wise, it can be life-changing in ways that go far beyond the skin on your face, but that definitely include the skin on your face. I've been making this list for a while just by kind of looking around my life and paying attention to all of the big and small things that I do on a daily basis that I believe are helping to get my skin clear and keep my skin clear. But that doesn't mean that it's comprehensive. So if there's anything you know of in this vein, anything that has really helped you with your skin, whether you're dealing with acne or with aging skin, anything that doesn't have to do with buying expensive skincare but has more to do with a lifestyle shift, please let us know in the comment section down below. I'm sure that other people who are watching this video would love to know, but I would also really love to know if you guys have any tips and tricks in this vein, because as you can tell, I collect them.
And of course, if you have any questions for me, if there's anything that I omitted to say, if anything wasn't clear, or if you have further questions about any of the things that I did mention, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will absolutely give you the best answer that I can. Thank you so much for watching. And whatever you have going on this week, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can smash the patriarchy with glowing skin. 